The Canon's Yeoman's Tale With this canon I dwelt have seven year, And of science am I near the near. All that I had I have lost thereby, And, God wot, so have many more than I. Where I was wont to be right, fresh and gay, Of clothing, and of other good array, Now may I wear on hose upon mine head, And where my color was both fresh and red, Now is it one, and of a leaden hue, Whoso it useth, sore shall he it rue, And of my swink yet bleared is mine eye, Lo, what advantage is to multiply! That sliding science hath me made so bare, That I have no good, where that ever I fare, and yet I am indebted so thereby of gold, that I have borrowed truly, that, while I live, I shall it quite never, let any man beware by me for ever. What manner man that casteth him thereto, if he continue, I hold his thrift ye do, so help me God, thereby shall he not win, but empty his purse, and make his wits thin, and when he, through his madness and folly, hath lost his own good through Juparty, then he exciteth other men thereto, to lose their good, as he himself hath do. For unto shrews joy it is and ease, to have their fellows in pain and disease. Thus was I once learned of a clerk, of that no charge I will speak of our work. When we be there as we shall exercise our elvish craft, we seem wonder-wise, our terms be so clergial and quaint. I blow the fire till that mine heart faint, why should I tell in each proportion of things which that we work upon, as on five or six ounces, may well be of silver or some other quantity? And busy me to tell you the names, as orpiment, burnt bones, iron squams, that into pounder ground be full small, and in an earthen pot how put is all, and salt ye put in, and also pepper, before these powders that I speak of here, and will he cover with a lamp of glass, and of much other thing which that there was, and of the pots and glasses in gluttoning, that of the air might pass and out no thing, and of the easy fire and smart also which that was made, and of the care and woe that we had in our matters subliming, and in amalgaming and calcining of quicksilver called mercury crude. For all our slights we cannot conclude, Our orpiment and sublime mercury, Our ground litharge, eke on the porphyry, Of each of these of ounces a certain, Not helpeth us, our labor is in vain, Nor neither our spirit's ascension, Nor our matters that lie all fixed down, May in our working nothing us avail, For lost is all our labor and travail, And all the cost, a twenty devil way, Is lost also, which we upon it lay. There is also full many another thing, That is unto our craft appertaining, Though I by order them not rehearse can, Because that I am a lewd man. Yet will I tell them as they come to mind, Although I cannot see them in their kind. As Saul, Armoniac, Vertigris, Boras, And sundry vessels made of earth and glass, Our urinals and our decennaries, files and crosslets and sublimatories, kirkerbites and alembikes eke, and other such, dear enough a leak, it needeth not for to rehearse them all. Waters rubifying and bull's gall, arsenic, sal armoniac, and brimstone, and herbs could I tell eke many a one, as agrimoin, valerian, and lunary, and other such, if that me list to tarry, our lamps burning both night and day to bring about our craft, if that we may. Our furnace eke of calcination and of water's albification, unslaked lime, chalk, and glare of any, powders diverse, ashes, dung, piss, and clay, seared pockets, salt petri, and vitriol, and divers fires made of wood and coal, salt tartar, Alkali, salt preparate, and combust matters, and coagulate, clay made with horse and man's hair, and oil of tartar, alum, glass, barm, wort, argoil, rosselgar, and other matters imbibing. And eke of our matters incorporing, and of our silver citrination, 
our cementing and fermentation, our ingots, tests, and many things mo. I will tell you, as was me taught also, the four spirits and the body seven, by order, as oft I heard my lord them nevin. The first spirit, Quicksilver, called as the second, Orpiment. The third he was Sal Armoniac, and the fourth, Brimstone. The body seven eke, lo them here anon. Soul gold is, and Luna silver we thrip. Mars iron, Mercury quicksilver we clip. Saturn is lead, and Jupiter is ten. And Venus copper by my father's ken. This cursed craft, who sue will exercise. He shall no good have that met him suffice. For all the good he spinneth thereabout, he lose shall. Thereof have I no doubt. Who sue that list to utter his folly? Let him come forth and learn to multiply. And every man that hath aught in his coffer, let him appear and wax a philosopher. Oskunst that craft is so light to leer. Nay, nay, God wot, all be he monk or frere, priest or kinnon, or any other wight, though he sit at his book both day and night, in learning of this elvish nice lore. All is in vain, and pretty much more, is to learn a lewd man this subtly. Fie, speak not thereof, for it will not be. And con he letterer, or con he none, as in effect he shall it find all one. For both two, by my salvation, concluden in multiplication. I like well, when they have all ye do, this is to say, they fail both too. Yet forgot I to make rehearsal of waters corrosive, and of the mile, and of bodies mollification, and also of their induration, oils, ablutions, metal fusible, to tell in all would pass in any Bible, that o'er oh, where is wherefore, as for the best, of all these names now will I me rest, for, as I trow, I have you told enough to raise a fiend, all look he ne'er so rough. Ah, nay, let be, the philosopher's stone, elixir called. We seek fast each one, for had we him, then were we sicker eno, and unto God of heaven I make a vow, for all our craft, when we have all ye do, and all our slight, he will not come us to. He hath he made us spend much good, for sorrow of which almost we waxed wood, but that good hope creeped in our heart, supposing ever though we sore smart, to be relieved by him afterward. Such supposing and hope is sharp and hard. I warn you well, it is to seek an ever. That future tempts hath made men dissever, and trust thereof, from all that ever they had. Yet of that art they cannot wax sad, for unto them it is bitter sweet. So seemeth it, for had they but a sheet, which that they might wrap them in at night, and a brat to walk in by daylight. They would them sell, and spin it on this craft. They cannot stint, until no thing be laughed. And evermore, wherever that they gone, Men may them know by smell of brimstone, For all the world they stinken as a goat. Their savour is so ramish and so hot, That though a man a mile from them be, The savour will infect him, trust me. Lo thus by smelling and threadbare array, If that men list, this folk they know may, and if a man will ask them privily why they be clothed so unthriftily, they right anon will run out in his ear, and sayin', if that they espied were, men would them slay because of their science. Lo, thus these folk betray an innocence. Pass over this, I go my tale unto. Ere that the pot be on the fiery dew of metals, with a certain quantity, my lord them tempers, and no man but he, now he is gone, I dare say boldly, for as men say, he can do craftly. I'll gate, I wot well he hath such a name, and yet full oft he runneth into blame. And know ye how, full oft it happeneth so, the pot to breaks, and farewell, all is go. These metals be of so great violence, our walls may not make them resistance. But if they were wrought of lime and stone, they pierce so, that through the wall they gone, and some of them sink down into the ground. Thus have we lost by times many a pound. And some are scattered all the floor about, some leap into the roof without doubt. Though that the fiend not in our sight him show, I trow that he be with us, that shrew, in hell, 
where that he is lord and sire, is there no more woe, rancor, nor ire? When that our pot is broke, as I have said, every man chides and holds him evil paid. Some said it was long on the fire making, some said nay, it was on the blowing. Then was I feared, for that was mine office. Straw, quoth the third, ye be lewd and nice, it was not tempered as it ought to be. Nay, quoth the fourth, stent and hearken me, because our fire was not he made of beech. That is the cause, and other none, so that I cannot tell whereon it was along. But well I wot great strife in us among. What, quoth my lord, there is no more to do, and of these perils I will beware of soon. I am right sicker that the pot was crazed. Be as be may, be ye no thing amazed, as usage is, let the sweep the floor as swift. Pluck up your hearts, and be glad and blith. The mullock on a heap he sweeped was, And on the floor he cast a canvas. And all this mullock in a sieve he throw, And sifted, and he picked many a throw. Party, quoth one, somewhat of our metal, Yet is there here, though that we have not all. And though this thing mishapped hath as now, Another time it may well be a now. We must put our good in adventure. A merchant party may not hey endure. Trust me well, in his prosperity, Sometimes his good is drenched in the sea, And sometimes comes it safe unto the land. Peace, quoth my lord, The next time I will fand, To bring our craft all in another plight. And but I do, sirs, let me have the white. There was default in somewhat, well I wot. Another said the fire was over hot, but be it hot or cold, I dare say this, that we conclude never more amiss, we fail alway of that which we would have, and in our madness evermore we rave. And when we be together every one, every man seemeth a Solomon. But all thing which that shineth as the gold, it is not gold, as I have heard it told, nor every apple that is fair at eye, it is not good, what so men clap or cry. Right so, lo, fair that among us, he that the wisest seemeth by Jesus is most fool, when it cometh to the proof. And he that seemeth truest is a thief. That shall ye know, ere that I from you wend, by that eye of my tale have made an end. There was a canon of religion among us, would infect all a town, though it is as great were as was Nineveh, Rome, Alessandra, Troy, or other three, his slights, and his infinite falseness, there could no man written, as I guess, though that he might live a thousand year, in all this world of falseness is his peer, for in his terms he will him so wind, and speak his words in so sly a kind, when he commune shall with any wight, that he will make him doubt anon or right, but if a fiend be, as himself is, Full many a man hath he beguiled ere this, And will, if that he may live only while. And yet men go and ride many a mile, Him for to seek and have his acquaintance, Not knowing of his false governance. And if you list to give me audience, I will it tell here in your presence. But, worshipful canons religious, Ne deem not that I slander your house, Although that my tale of a canon be. Of every order some shrew is party, and God forbid that all a company Should rue a singular man's folly. To slander you is no thing mine intent, But to correct, that is amiss I meant. This tale was not only told for you, But eke for other more, Ye wot well how, that amongst Christ's apostles twelve, There was no traitor but Judas himself. Then why should all the remnant have blame, That guiltless were? By you I say the same, save only this, if ye will hearken me, if any Judas in your convent be, remove him betimes, I you read, if shame or loss may cause in any dread, and be no thing displeased, I pray you, but in this case hearken what I say. In London was a priest, in Unalur, that therein dwelled had many a year, which was so pleasant and so serviceable unto the wife, or as he was at table, that she would suffer him no thing to pay, for board, nor clothing, when he ne'er so gay, and spending silver had he right enow, thereof no force will proceed as now. 
and tell forth my tale of the canon that brought this priest to confusion. This false canon came upon a day unto the priest's chamber where he lay, beseeching him to lend him a certain of gold, and he would quitten him again. Lend me a mark, quoth he, but days three, and at my day I will it quite thee. And if it so be that thou find me false, another day hang me up by the halse. This priest him took a mark, and that as swithe, and this canon him thanked him often scythe, and took his leave, and went forth his way, and at the third day brought his money. And to the priest he took his gold again, whereof this priest was wondrous glad and fain. Sirs, quoth he, nothing annoyeth me to lend a man a noble or two or three, or what thing were in my possession, when he so true is of condition that in no wise he break will his day. To such a man I never can say nay. What, quoth this canon, should I be untrue? Nay, that were a thing ye fallen all of new. Truth is a thing that I will ever keep, unto the day in which that I shall creep into my grave, and else God forbid, believe this as sicker as your creed. God thank I, and in good time be it said, that there was never man yet evil paid, for gold or silver that he to me lent, nor ever falsehood in mine heart I meant. And, sir, quoth he, now of my privity, since ye so goodly have been unto me, and give to me so great gentleness somewhat, to quit with your kindness, I will you shew, and if you list to leer, I will you teach plainly the manner, how I can work it in philosophy. Take good heed, ye shall well see at I, that I will do a mastery ere I go. Yeah, quoth the priest, yes, sir, and will ye so? Mary, thereof I pray you heartily. At your commandment, sir, truly, quoth the canon, and else God forbid, lo, how this thief could his service bed. Full sooth it is that such proffered service stinketh, as witness these old wise, and that full soon I will it verify in this canon root of all treachery, that evermore delight had and gladness, such fiendly thoughts in his heart impress, how Christ's people he may to mischief bring. God keep us from his false dissimuling. What wist this priest with whom that he dealt? Nor of his harm coming he nothing felt. O oh, silly priest, O oh, silly innocent, with covetise anon thou shalt be blent. O oh, graceless fool blind is thy conceit. For nothing art thou aware of the deceit, Which that this foxy shapen hath to thee, His wily wrenches thou not mayest flee. Wherefore, to go to the conclusion, That refereth to thy confusion, Unhappy man, anon I will me high, To tell thine unwit and thy folly, And eke the falseness of that other wretch. As far forth as that my conning will stretch, This cannon was my lord, ye would ween, Sir host in faith, and by the heaven's queen it was another canon, and not he, the canon hundredfold more subtlety. He hath betrayed folks many a time, of his falseness it dolleth me to rhyme, and ever when I speak of his false head, for shame of him my cheeks wax red. All gates they begin for to glow, for redness have I none, right well I know, in my visage for fumes diverse of metals, which ye have me heard rehearse, consumed have and wasted my redness. Now take heed of this canon's cursedness. Sir, quoth he to the priest, let your man gone for quicksilver, that we it had anon, and let him begin ounces two or three, and when he comes, as fast shall ye see, a wondrous thing which ye saw ne'er ere this. Sir, quoth the priest, it shall be done he was. He bade his servant fetch him this thing, and he already was at his bidding, and went him forth, and came anon again, with this quicksilver shortly for to sane, and took these ounces three to the canon, and he laid them well and fair down, and bade the servant coals for to bring, that he anon might go to his working, the coals right anon weren't ye fit, and this canon he took a crosslet out of his bosom, and showed it to the priest, this instrument, quoth he, which that thou seest, take in thine hand, and put thyself therein, of this quicksilver an ounce, and here begin, in the name of Christ, to wax a philosopher. There be full few, 
which that I would proffer, to show them thus such of my science. For here shall ye see by experience that this quicksilver I will mortify, write in your sight anon without lie, and make it as good silver and as fine as there is any in your purse or mine, or elsewhere, and make it malleable, and else hold me false and unable among folk for ever to appear. I have a powder here that cost me dear, shall make all good, for it is cause of all my cunning, which that I you shew shall, void your man, and let him be thereout, and shut the door while we be about, our privity that no man us espy, while that we work in this philosophy. All as he bade, fulfilled was indeed. This like servant right anon out yeed, and his mastery shut the door anon, and to their labor speedily they gone. This priest, at this cursed canon's bidding, upon the fire anon he set this thing, and blew the fire, and busied him full fast, and this canon unto the crosslet cast a powder. I know not whereof it was, he made either of chalk, either of glass, or somewhat else, was not worth a fly, to blind with this priest, and bade him high. The coals for it a couch, and all above, the crosslet. Bore in token I thee love, quoth this canon, thine own hands too shall work all thing that there shall be due. Grand mercy, quoth the priest, and was full glad, and couched the coals as the canon bade. And while he busy was, this fiendly wretch, this false canon, thou foul fiend him fetch, out of his bosom took a breaching coal, in which full subtifly was made a hole, and therein put was of silver mail an ounce, and stopped was without fail. The hole was wax to keep the mail in, and understand that, that this false gin was not made there, but it was made before. And other things I shall tell you more, hereafterward, which that he with him be brought. Ere he came there, him to beguile he thought, and so he did, ere that they went wit. Till he had turned him, could he not blin. It doleth me, when that I of him speak, of his falsehood fain would I me reek. If I wist how, but he is here and there. He is so variant, he abides nowhere. But take heed, sirs, now for God's love. He took his coal, of which I spake above, and in his hand he bare it privily. And while the priest couched busily, the coals, as I told you ere this, this canon said, Friend, ye do amiss. This is not coached as it ought to be, but soon I shall amend in it, quoth he. Now let me meddle therewith but a while, for of you have I pity by St. Gill, ye be right hot, I see well how ye sweat. Have here a cloth, and wipe away the wet. And while that the priest wiped his face, this canon took his coal, with sorry grace, and laid it above on the midward of the crosslet, and blew well afterward, to let the coals began fast to brin. Now give us drink, quoth this canon then, and swift all shall be well, I undertake. Sit we down, and let us merry make. And when that this cannon's breaching coal was burnt, all the mail out of the hole into the crosslet anon fell down. And so it must needs by reason, since it above so even couched was. But thereof wist the priest no thing. Alas! He deemed all the coals alike good, for of the slight he nothing understood. And when this alchemist saw his time, Rise up, sir priest, quoth he, and stand by me. And for I wot well and got have ye none. Go, walk forth, and bring me a chalk stone, For I will make it of the same shape That is in a got, if I may have hap. Bring eke with you a bowl, or else a pan, Full of water, and ye shall well see then How that our business shall hap and priv. And yet, for ye shall have no misbelieve, No wrong conceit of me in your absence, I will not be out of your presence, But go with you, and come with you again. The chamber door shortly for to say, and they opened and shut, and went their way, and forth with them they carried the key, and came again without any delay. Why should I tarry all the long day? He took the chalk and shaped it in the wise of an ingot, as I shall you devise. I say he took out of his own sleeve a teen of silver, evil may he cheave, which that he was but just ounce of weight. And take heed now of his cursed slight. He shaped his ingot in length and in brid Of this teen without any dread, Slow slyly that the priest it not espied, 
and in his sleeve again he gan it hide, and from the fire he took up his matter, and in the end got put it with merry cheer, and in the water vessel he had cast, when that him list and bade the priest as fast, look what there is, put in thine hand and grope, there shalt thou find silver as I hope, what devil of hell should it else be, shaving of silver, silver is party. He put his hand in, and took up a teen of silver fine, and glad in every vein was this priest, when he saw that it was so. God's blessing, and his mother's also. And all hallows have ye, Sir Canon, said this priest, and I there, Malison, but an ye vouchsafe to teach me this noble craft and this subtlety, I will be yours in all that ever I may, quoth the canon, yet will I make a say this second time that ye may take heed. And be expert of this, and in your need, another day essay in mine absence, this discipline, and this crafty science. Let take another ounce, quoth he though, of quicksilver, without words mo, and do therewith as ye have done ere this, with that other which that now silver is. The priest him busied, all that even he can, to do as this canon, this cursed man, commanded him, and fast he blew the fire, for to come to the effect of his desire. And this canon, right in the meanwhile, already was this priest eft to beguile, and for a countenance in his hand bare, all hallow stick, to keep him beware, of silver le mail put was, as before, was in his coal, and stopped with wax well, for to keep in his le mail every deal. And while this priest was in his business, this canon, with his stick, gan him dress, to him anon, and his powder cast in, as he did erst, the devil out of his skin him turn, I pray to God, for his false head, for he was ever false in thought and deed. And with his stick, above the crosslet, that was ordained with that false get, he stirred the coals, till run it gan, the wax against the fire, as every man. But he a fool be, knows well it must need, and all that in the stick was out yeed, and in the crosslet hastily it fell. Now, good sirs, what will ye bet then well? When that this priest was thus beguiled again, supposing not but truth, sooth to sane, he was so glad that I cannot express in no manner his mirth and his gladness, and to the canon he proffered eft soon body and good. Yea, quoth the canon soon, though poor I be, crafty though shalt me find, I warn thee well, yet is there more behind. Is any copper here within, said he? Yea, sir, the priest said, I trow there be. Else go buy us some, and that has swithe. Now, good sir, go forth thy way and hie thee. He went his way, and with the copper came, and this cannon it in his hand's name, and of that copper weighed out an ounce, too simple is my tongue to pronounce, as minister of my wit, the doubleness of this cannon, root of all cursedness, he friendly seemed to them that knew him not. But he was fiendly both in work and thought. It wearieth me to tell of his falseness, and nathless yet will I it express. To that intent men may beware thereby, and for none other cause truly, he put this copper in the crosslet, and on the fire as swith he hath it set, and cast it powder, and made the priest to blow, and in his working for to stoop low, as he did erst, and all was but a jap. Right as him list the priest he made his ape, and afterward in the end got as he cast, and in the pan he put it at the last, of water, and in he put his own hand, and in his sleeve, as he beforehand heard him tell, he had a silver teen, he silly took it out, this cursed heen, unweeting this priest of his false craft, and in the pan's bottom he it laughed, and in the water rumbleth to and fro, and wondrous privily took up also the copper teen, not knowing thilk priest, and hid it, and him hint by the breast, and to him spake, and thus said in his game, Stoop now adown, by God, ye beat to blame, help me now, as I did you well. Put in your hand, and look what is there. This priest took up this silver teen anon, and then said the canon, Let us gone, with these three teens which that we have wrought, to some goldsmith, and wheat if they be aught, for by my faith I would not for my hood, but if they were silver fine and good, and that as swift well proof shall it be. 
Under the goldsmith with these teens three, they went anon, and put them in a say. To fire and hammer might no man say nay, but that they, they were and as ought to be. This sotted priest, who gladder was than he? Was never bird gladder against the day, nor nightingale in the season of May? Was never non that better list to sing, nor lady lustier in caroling? Or for to speak of love and womanhead, nor knight in arms to do a hardy deed, to stand in grace of his lady dear? Then had this priest his craft for to leer. And to the canon thus he spake and said, For love of God, that for us all died, And as I may deserve it unto you, What shall this receipt cost? Tell me now. By Our Lady, quoth this canon, It is dear. I warn you well, that save I and Freer, In England there can no man it make. No forth, quoth he. Now, sir, for God's sake, What shall I pay? Tell me, I you pray. Ye wise, quoth he, it is full dear, I say, Sir, at one word, if that you list it have, Ye shall pay forty pounds, so God me save, And near the friendship that ye did there thus, To me ye should pay more, ye was. This priest the sum of forty pound anon Of nobles fet, and took them every one To this canon, for this ilk receipt. And all his working was but fraud and deceit. Sir priest, he said, I keep to have no loss of my craft, for I would it were kept close. And as ye love me, keep it, for if men knew all my subtlety, by God they would have so great envy. To me, because of my philosophy, I should be dead. There were no other way. God, God it forbid, quoth the priest, what ye say. Yet had I lever spend all the good, which that I have, and else where I would, then that ye should fall in such mischief. For your good will, sir, have ye right prude prefer, quoth the canon, and farewell, grand mercy. He went his way, and never the priest him sue, after that day. And when that this priest should make an essay at such time as he would of this receipt, farewell, it would not be. Lo, thus bejipped and beguiled was he, thus made me, thus made he his introduction, to bring folk to their destruction. Consider, sirs, how that in each estate, betwixt men and gold, there is debate, so far forth that on is there is there none, this multiplying blent, so many a one, that in good faith I trow that it be the cause greatest of such scarcity. These philosophers speak so mistily in this craft that men cannot come thereby. For any wit that men have howadays, they may well chatter, as do these jays, but in their terms set their lust and pain. But to their purpose shall they ne'er attain. A man may lightly learn, if he have aught, To multiply, and bring his good to naught. Lo, such a lucre is the lusty game. A man's mirth it will turn all to grame. And empty also great and heavy purses, And make folk for to purchase curses Of them that have thereto their good elent. O oh, fie for shame, they that have been brent. Alas! Can they not flee the fire's heat? Ye that it use, I read that ye it lit, Lest ye lose all, for better than never is late. Never to thrive were too long a date. Though ye prowl a, ye shall it never find, Ye be as bold as is bared the blind, That blunders forth, and peril casteth none. For he is as bold to run against a stone, As for to go beside it in the way, So fare ye that multiply, I say. If that your even cannot ye see aright, Look! that your mind lacketh not his sight. For though you look never so broad and stare, ye shall not win a mite of that chiff. But waste in all that ye may rape and rend, withdraw the fire, list it too fast brin. Middle no more with that art I mean, for if ye do, your thrift is gone full clean, and right as swift I will you tell here what philosophers say in this matter. Lo, thus saith Arnold of the new town, as his rosary maketh mention, he saith right thus, without any lie. There may no man Mercury mortify, but it be with his brother's knowledging. Lo, how that he, which first saith this thing, of philosopher's father was Hermes, he saith, how that the dragon doubtless he dieth not, but if that he be slain with his brother. And this is for to say by the dragon Mercury, and none other, he understood, and brimstone by his brother, that out of Sol and Luna were he draw. And therefore, said he, take heed to my saw, let no man busy him this art to seech, but if, 
that he the intention and speech of philosophers understand can. And if he do, he is a lewd man. For this science and this conning, quoth he, is of the secret of secrets party. Also there was a disciple of Plato that on a time said his master to, as his book, Signor, will bear witness. And this was his demand in soothfastness. Tell me the name of thilk privy stone. And Plato answered unto him anon, Take the stone that Titanos men name. Which is that? Quoth he. Magnesia is the same, said Plato. Yea, sir, and is it thus? This is ignotum per ignotius. What is magnesia, good sir, I pray? It is a water that is made, I say, of the elements four, quoth Plato. Tell me the root, good sir, quoth he, though, of that water, if that it be your will. Nay, nay, quoth Plato, certain that I will. The philosophers sworn were every one that they should not discover it to none, nor in no book it write in no manner. For unto God it is so lief and dear, that he will not that it discovered be. But where it liketh to his deity, man for to inspire, and eke for to defend. Whom that he liketh, lo, this is the end. Then thus conclude I, since that God of heaven will not that these philosophers niven, how that a man shall come unto his stone, I read as for the best to let it gone. For whoso maketh God his adversary, as for to work any thing in contrary of his will, certes never shall he thrive, though that he multiply term of his life. And there a point, for ended is my tale, God send every good man boot of his bale. End of Canon Yeoman's Tale